After nearly three years in prison and facing 22 more, a former high school football star's child sexual assault conviction could be overturned. Tonight, the new Williamson County District Attorney is talking about why he reopened this case and where it goes from here. Let's bring in Tony Plohetsky, who broke this story. Hey, Tony. Hey, Mike and Quita. Sean Dick got information soon after he took office in January from Greg Kelly's defense team, and that set today's events into motion. Dick says it was viable enough to ask the Texas Rangers to investigate the possibility that someone else assaulted a four-year-old boy. Tonight, Dick confirms Jonathan McCarty is an alternative suspect in the case. McCarty's mother operated an in-home daycare, and Kelly was staying with the family because his parents were ill. Authorities arrested McCarty today on a probation violation. He is in the Williamson County Jail tonight. Dick says it's important for the community to trust the criminal justice system, and he says the public deserves the truth about Greg Kelly's guilt or innocence. It's really important to me that this office is transparent and that the public knows that we're really trying to do everything we can to get it right. And a lot of people that have very strong feelings about this, and uh, we're just trying to do the right thing and, and take a step back and, and really look at and evaluate all of the evidence. A newly unsealed court document says that cell phone technology shows Greg Kelly was not living in the house with McCarty, whose mother was operating an in-home daycare center at the time of the crime. It also says that McCarty had images of naked young children on his computer and his cell phone. Tonight, we know that a Williamson County judge has set a hearing for Kelly the first week of August. She will decide then whether Kelly could be released from prison on bond. A big decision for the DA is whether or not he will contest that in any way or how strongly. Convicted criminal Greg Kelly sits down first with KVU. I don't know what physical freedom feels like anymore. You know, like it's, it's been, it's only been three years, but you know, it's just when I, when I get out, I, I, I dream and I vision of what it's going to be like. To this day, he maintains his innocence. You know, at this point right now in my life, it's like I've come to, uh, 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 I guess you could say, a realization that I need to just wait and be patient and the truth will come out. And now his focus is on the future. I've become really excited because my hope is skyrocketed on going home before I'm 44. I'm Terry Gruca. And I'm Mike Rush. Today we hear for the first time in person from Greg Kelly, one week after authorities confirmed new questions about whether somebody else may have sexually assaulted a four-year-old boy. Kelly was convicted for that crime and is now serving a 25-year prison sentence. KVU defender and Austin American statesman reporter Tony Plohetsky was the first reporter to sit down with Kelly since these new revelations. He is here now with what he had to say. Interesting to hear his perspective today. And we spent about an hour with him in Huntsville today, Mike and Terry. We traveled to Huntsville where Greg Kelly, who is now 22, is serving the third year of that sentence after a Williamson County jury convicted him in August 2014. Kelly says what he has continued to say all along, that he is an innocent man wrongfully convicted. Now we covered a variety of topics during our one hour interview with him at the Wynn unit. That's a maximum security prison. We talked to Kelly who wore a prison uniform face to face and he described his life behind bars for the past nearly three years. A lot of great things have happened to me on this unit. And you know, I choose to sit back and see that. You know, um, <clears throat> what are some of the, what are some of the great things? Um, I develop a faith and a hope, you know. Um, I've soul searched. I got the time to sit back and, and uh, look up, you know. I've had, to, I've had the privilege to attend chapel classes and uh, being, be uh, poured into by a lot of mentors that are inmates that are, that are truly just, that truly changed their life. You know, when you live with a man, and you live with men, day in and day out, you get to see their true colors. Because after a little while, a man's true character and what's in his heart will be shown after, you know, after time takes its course. Kelly also says he has thought about who he is as a person. 
a career. So that's then you you tell you tell us who is uh, who is Greg Kelly. Okay, um, Greg Kelly, um, a Christian man. I, uh, I'm an innocent man. As in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I uh, have a desire to do a lot of good in the world. I want to I be a husband and a father with Christian morals and principles and values. I want to I wanna, um, shed light to a lot of wrongdoing in Texas. Um, I want to supply hope for the falsely convicted. Um, I just want to be the best that I can be. Um, that's who I am. Greg Kelly is back in the Williamson County Jail tonight, not a free man, but awaiting a hearing to try to get his conviction overturned. But to his family and supporters, the decision to bring Kelly home is what they hope is the first step toward his ultimate freedom. Tony Plohetsky has been following this case. He's in Georgetown outside the jail tonight. And Mike and Terry, the big question here tonight is just how long Greg Kelly will remain in the Williamson County Jail and whether or not a judge and the local DA here could agree to let him out on bond. Now, Kelly arrived around 4 p.m. today in an unmarked sheriff's SUV. Deputies helped him with a bag of belongings from prison. Outside of our view, Sheriff Robert Shodi tells us that Kelly was allowed to meet with several minutes with a few supporters and his attorney, as well as family members. Pam Brimberry is a spokeswoman for the Kelly family. We just got to see Greg and get a hug, and that it was an incredible experience. He is doing really well, and we're really proud of how he is held up under this extreme stress. Sheriff Shodi tells us that Kelly will be booked into the Williamson County Jail and have his mugshot taken just like any other suspect. However, the sheriff said that because of Kelly's status, he will be given some different treatment from other inmates here. The sheriff would not go into those details. Kelly has a hearing in August. That's when a judge could decide whether or not to uphold his conviction, possibly order a new trial, or even declare Kelly an innocent man. Her ruling will then go to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Reporting live in Georgetown, Tony Plahutsky, KVU News. We found a, an innocent person guilty. Tonight, a KVU Defenders Austin American Statesman joint exclusive. A juror in the Greg Kelly case speaking publicly for the first time tonight says he is now living with regret. He tells us he initially believed Kelly was innocent, but eventually collapsed under pressure to convict the former football star. Tony Plahetsky sat down with that juror for his only interview. Mike and Quita, that juror asked that we not use his name or show his face. He still lives in the same community as Greg Kelly's family, and he has two kids himself at Leander High School, where Kelly was once a football star. He is convinced that a wrongly convicted man, an innocent man, sits in prison tonight, and he hopes that his decision and that of the other jurors to convict Kelly is soon wiped away and that Greg Kelly gets a second chance at freedom. Late into the night, as Greg Kelly stood before the jury awaiting their verdict, 12 jurors went around the room, each telling the courtroom their decision. When they were polling everybody, and I was, I can't remember where I was in the, in the jury. I know I was closest to the people in, in the seats. Everybody was saying, guilty, that is my vote. And Ike almost said not guilty, but I didn't, should have. Their decision paving the way for Kelly to be sentenced to the next 25 years in prison and for this juror to live a life consumed by regret and second guessing. The first two weeks after this trial was, well, we're the worst. You know, a man goes to work and gets home wants to have a cold beer. I couldn't do that for two weeks. Thinking about what happened. 
think about what's going through his head sitting in that prison cell when he shouldn't be. Nobody should have to go through something like that, especially if they're, if they're innocent and they know they're innocent. We now know that prosecutors and the Texas Rangers are investigating whether someone else sexually assaulted the four-year-old boy at this Cedar Park and home daycare. Kelly was staying there with his best friend while his own parents were seriously ill. Officials say that friend, Jonathan McCarty, is a suspect. Court records filed by Kelly's defense show he has confessed to two people and had photographs of nude children on his cell phone. Even though all this that's coming out was never presented to us, you know, I still felt he was innocent. The jury recounted intense jury deliberations that went on for 11 hours and nearly devolved into shouting matches and name calling and the pressure inside that room. They were tired. They wanted to go home. I wanted to go home. But I feel as though we were pressured not only by the other jurors, but by the judge to come up with a decision. And I didn't think that was right. We need to go home. We want to go home. So I said, well, if y'all want to go home, just for y'all, I will change my vote. And with that, Greg Kelly is found guilty, convicted as a child molester. In the three years since he helped convict Kelly, the juror says he has considered one day reaching out to him and what he might say to a man whose fate once hinged on his vote. He's certain he would apologize. We were wrong. I tried, but I couldn't. He should be exonerated for everything. His name needs to be cleared. He needs to get his life back. We tried reaching out to every juror in this case. Of the 10 we could find, only this one and another agreed to talk. The other juror would only tell me by phone that he voted to convict Kelly based on the evidence presented at trial, but now he's having second thoughts about that decision. Now to Williamson County, where prosecutors are picking apart the investigation that led to the conviction of Greg Kelly on child sexual assault charges. That conviction now in question as prosecutors consider another suspect, Jonathan McCarty. KVU's Tony Plohetsky is live outside the courthouse. And Tony, prosecutors had a lot of questions today for the Cedar Park police detective who initially investigated this case. Well, Mike and Quita, that's exactly right. That investigator now oversees all major crimes for the Cedar Park Police Department. His name is Chris Daly, and he has been one of the most controversial figures in this case all along. Today, he stood by his work, his investigation, and says he got the right guy. Under questioning from prosecutors, Daly says he focused on Greg Kelly because Kelly was identified by a four-year-old boy as the perpetrator. Daly says he built the investigation investigation around that outcry and his own feeling that Greg Kelly was guilty. But Daly did say he did not do several things that prosecutors hinted through their questioning that he should have done. Those things include not going to the house where the child said the crime happened, not seizing evidence that the boy says was used in the crime, and not trying to identify all of the other adults in the house and whether someone else may have committed the crime. Going back to the original purpose of the event of, of an investigation, a criminal investigation, which is to seek truth, don't you think it's a little, little contradictory on your part to do that? Also, there was no other victims and no other suspects. So there was no other people to look into. There was no other suspects? No, sir. Okay. Did you, how do you know there was no other suspects? Because they named Greg Kelly as a suspect. Now, Detective Daly acknowledged on the stand today that the child did get several facts wrong in this case, but he says he is still confident that the child knew who assaulted him. Now, Daly's work has also been a source of testimony, was also a source of testimony in the original trial. Cedar Park Police Chief Sean Mannix has stood by the work of Detective Daly and his entire department in this case. Breaking tonight in a hearing for Greg Kelly, investigators reveal there is now a third suspect in the sexual assault for which Kelly was sentenced to prison. We're live once again with team coverage from the Williamson County Courthouse, and we'll start with Tony Plahetsky. And Tony, even the Texas Rangers say Kelly did not get due process the first time around. 
Well, Quito and Mike, a lot of that ranger's testimony today focused on the work of the Cedar Park Police Department and things that that ranger says the department did not do as part of its investigation that they should have. But earlier in the day, we also heard from the first time from Patricia Cummings. She was Greg Kelly's defense attorney in his original trial. She was in the hot seat answering questions about whether or not she cast away information that she should have paid attention to that possibly implicated someone else. Now today, witnesses told a judge that she waved off their pleas to look at a person they said was obvious to them. That person, Jonathan McCarty. McCarty is now one of two alternative suspects in this case. Now Patricia Cummings is a well-respected defense attorney here in Williamson County. Today, prosecutors expressed their frustration that she would not answer some of their questions while on the witness stand. But Cummings said she was bound by attorney-client privilege from doing so. I'm so grateful to finally be out. I've been away for this day a long time. Breaking news. Former high school football star Greg Kelly out on bond. It's the first time he's seen freedom in three years since a jury convicted him of child sexual assault. His release comes amid his ongoing bid to have that conviction overturned. KVU and Austin American Statesman reporter Tony Plahetsky is live outside the Williamson County Jail with how this all went down today. Tony? Well, Terry, Greg Kelly's release on bond has been weeks in the making, but when it all came down to it today, it really happened within a span of just a few minutes. Greg Kelly walked out of the Williamson County Jail, a door here, and greeted dozens of supporters. He was then driven away in a private SUV. Kelly emerged with his attorney, Keith Hampton, around 3 o'clock, and those same supporters who have stood by him in the four years since his whole case started greeted him. It's had its ups and downs for the past three years, and that's a new beginning for me. Uh, I know it's not over yet, but uh, we're going to continue fighting, and the truth will prevail. And uh, I just thank the, the DA's office, the judge, to give me an open mind to uh, allow me to finally come home to my family. And uh, I just want to go home. I'm sorry, but I didn't do that to your child. Um, someday I hope I, I can meet you and I can explain to you that it wasn't me. Um, I just hope that uh, you can have peace in this moment. Kelly's mother was here, as was his girlfriend, who has stood by his side this whole time. Now, his release comes about three weeks after a hearing where his attorney presented evidence that he said exonerates Greg Kelly and implicates Greg Kelly's friend, Jonathan McCarty. Now, a judge said she released Greg Kelly because of what she considered a bad police investigation by the Cedar Park Police Department and also because of his legal rec representation during his trial. Kelly's first lawyer has said she believes that she is being made a scapegoat in this process and Cedar Park Police have declined to comment because of the ongoing case. Now in order for Kelly to be released, the state and the judge had to agree today on grounds for him to be released on bond and coming up tonight at 6, I'll have more on what those grounds were. Reporting live in Georgetown, Tony Plahetsky, KVU News. Tonight, we're learning more about a judge's decision to release Greg Kelly on bond. She is citing shortcomings in the investigation by the Cedar Park Police Department and advice from Kelly's defense lawyer in that trial. Tony Plohetsky has been following this case for months. He joins us now live from Georgetown. Well, Mike and Quita, for Greg Kelly to get released on bond today, prosecutors and a state district judge here had to agree on facts that could possibly lead to Greg Kelly having his conviction overturned. And state district judge Donna King sided with Greg Kelly's lawyers today on at least two fronts. She said Kelly's due process was violated by the Cedar Park Police Department, who she said did not thoroughly investigate the sexual assault of a four-year-old boy. And she said attorney Patricia Cummings did not properly represent Kelly by allowing him to waive his right to appeal despite what she said was a lack of evidence against him. District Attorney Sean Dick held a press conference following Greg Kelly's release this afternoon and said that this was an utter collapse of the criminal justice system. 
and that there were failures at every level, from the investigation to the prosecution to the defense and even to the jury. And I feel very strongly that you know, we don't know the answer today. As we sit here, we don't know the answer whether Greg Kelly is truly innocent or not. Uh, we don't know whether the alternate suspects are truly innocent or not. But the one thing that I do know is that the system did, didn't work. Strong words tonight from Greg Kelly at the Cedar Park City Council meeting. Yeah, he's making it clear that he blames that city's police department for what he and others say was a botched investigation that helped land him in prison. Tony Ploheski was there. Truth and accountability. That is why Greg Kelly said he came here tonight. He spoke less than two minutes, his voice cracking at times. Greg Kelly took aim at the city's police department, saying they did not properly investigate his case. And afterwards, he spoke to a group of reporters. Uh, going into this, I was real standoffish, trusting authority figures to give me a right due process and to actually care about me. You know, and after three years of learning that that was violated, um, I wanted to come here and I wanted to speak my mind and what I believe. I didn't get a fair deal, you know. I and every day I have to deal with that, you know. At three years I had to deal with that. I don't think people understand that, you know. And I just want people to do the right thing. I want people to be held accountable. Greg Kelly arrived at the council meeting with a group of supporters, including his mother and his longtime girlfriend. This all comes two days after a judge released Kelly on bond. His appeal is pending. We begin with breaking news in the Greg Kelly case this afternoon. A judge in Williamson County has just ruled that he should be declared innocent in a child sexual assault that led to his conviction and 25 year prison sentence. Tony Plohetsky has been following this case for months and joins us now live from Georgetown. Tony? Well, Mike and Terry, this is the best possible outcome that Greg Kelly, his legal team, and his supporters could have hoped for. It is a major triumph for them that comes about three years after a Williamson County jury convicted him of sexually assaulting a four-year-old boy. Now, the ruling by State District Judge Donna King says, quote, the court finds that the culmination of evidence supports applicants' claim of actual innocence. He has met the burden and established he is actually innocent of the offense for which he was convicted. Now, this comes after a hearing in August in which Kelly's attorneys presented evidence that someone else may have assaulted the boy at an in-home Cedar Park day care. District Attorney Sean Dick said just minutes ago that it is likely that no one will ever be held responsible for what yes. happened to that four-year-old boy. You don't become a prosecutor, you don't uh, become a police officer to let crimes go unsolved. And in many ways this crime is, is going to go unsolved. And so yes, it's, it's very frustrating, very unsatisfying. In her ruling, Judge King said that Kelly's conviction was the result of a violation of due process and that his attorney in his first trial was ineffective. She also granted a due process claim, saying that Kelly's rights were violated because of a botched Cedar Park police investigation. Now, as we have been saying all along, but it is important to note this afternoon, Greg Kelly's case is still not yet over. Judge King's rulings will now go to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals.